Hey everybody, it's Travis and Kathy from the Steel Magnolia and we are wanting to show you our Trail Manor camper that we now have for sale and uh, we're going to go through the process of setting it up, let you see the inside and we'll also break it back down. So uh, Miss Kathy, you ready to run the camera? Yeah, I'm ready to roll. Let's get on with it. All right, well, we have set the camper up to this point, and uh, the last thing I need to do is drop down the last uh, remaining stabilizer. So, man, we got a lot of wind blowing, so y'all bear with us. What I did, I hated the little part that they use where you have to use an Allen wrench or the strange little thing for lowering these. I welded a three quarter inch nut on the end of this so I can use the appropriate tool. Okay. And that's a whole lot quicker and easier than monkeying around with the manual wrench. All right, that's the last stabilizer down. All right, we're rolling. Okay. All right, so the first thing you want to do is release all four of your latches. Now, for all of our Trail Manor fans that know what you're doing, this is going to be painful. But for people that may not know about a Trail Manor, I'm going to show all this in detail. So you release the four safety latches, or what we call travel latches. Once those are done, you want to release the front shell. And here's the latch for the front shell. Front shell always releases forward. So I'm going to go to the other side and open it, come back and do this one. It doesn't make any difference which one you do first. Okay, so I have released the other side, and I'm getting ready to release this one. Now, I have my tension rods adjusted pretty stiff, so when I release it, it's ready to open. All right, let me back out a little bit. Okay, okay. go ahead. And I did it this way so that Kathy could open it by herself if need be. Okay, notice how the shell rises up. Come on around front, Kathy. Something else that I did, because if you're doing this by yourself, you need to lift from the center, okay? Not lift from the edge by yourself, because that's going to get things crooked. What I did, I mounted a strap, okay? It's a polyethylene strap, and it's mounted dead center. That way, I can grab a hold of it, put a hand on top of this for a little leverage, and I'm going to do this with two fingers. get out of the way and then the shell latch goes into place this pin lines up with this hole there's one on the other side okay now that completes the lifting of the front shell so I'm going to go ahead and pull the slide out out for the front. Kathy, come around over here. Come up under. You can just kind of see what's here. I can see the roof. That's a good thing. Here. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do, just look around here. We're going to pull the living room slide out. Now, something that I did change, this had a plastic pull handle on it. And I changed it out to something that would not break, because the original one broke. So this is another polyethylene strap with a cushion grip on it. All right, ready to go? Back them up. Nice and easy and pull straight out. Make sure it's centered. The front's complete. Now, we're going to raise the back shell and I'm going to go release it on the other side and I'll meet you at this latch.
when you're releasing the two latches, remember that the front shell pushes forward to release, the rear shell pushes aft to release. Okay? Just back out that way. And you can lift from right here, and up it comes. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let Miss Kathy lift it up so you can just see her lift it. Okay, and she's gonna put the safety latches in place. Okay, now, everything is secure. This is the bed deck, and we're going to pull it out. Now, the mattress is not in here. We have it stored in the house because uh, we were doing some cleaning, so we just took it out. So what we always like to do is take this rubber seal and slide our hands down it so that you're basically standing it up, and it ends right there. Okay? That just makes things a little better. You already got that already one, got Kathy? That. All right. Stand by. All right, Kathy, if you'll pull the bed deck out. Kathy's pulling the bed deck out. And it pulls out and centers up. And that's it. These are our girl chickens. Hey, girls. All right, let me open the door, Kathy. Now we are ready to open the door. First thing, step. Second thing. There's a safety latch here. So that comes out, that pushes in. This pin lines up with a receiver right here. So we press that into place, flap goes over. Okay, now the door is hinged in two places. It pushes in and it swings out. There's also another pin here. And it goes into a little receiver groove right there. So I'm gonna line that up. <laughs> line this up and since we all we know where it's at it's not a big deal once that's in place this comes over and this is a, 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 a non-factory latch that I put on because it joins the two halves together and holds them nice and snug so now our door is complete all right pretty simple when Kathy and I are setting this up together without talking to people and that sort of stuff, just setting it up. After we get the stabilizers down, it takes us about a minute and 20 seconds to raise both shells, pull out the living room, and pull out the bed slide. So the outside stuff is really quick. So let's go inside and take a look. Okay. So we got the outside set up. That was pretty quick and painless. I'm gonna turn a few lights on, just so it makes it a little brighter inside. All right, now, something that we did, all of this stuff is held to the wall with Velcro. Over the years, this Velcro had deteriorated, done terrible things, so we done something different. We used a small bungee cord and it's attached here and it just clips onto the windowsill and it'll lay right here in this groove and that lays down. Okay? And then you secure these. That's your, your weather flap. You notice the same arrangement here. So when I take that off, it'll tuck in right there. Okay? I'll bring this down, close it off. This flap comes down the front here. Let me get this other side.
All right, Miss Kathy. This is the front section, and we only hook it on the one side. We didn't find it ever necessary to have to connect both sides. And this flap is going to seal behind here, but for now, I'm just going to do it like that. Okay? So, we are now ready to set up the inside, but I'm going to show you a couple of things while the chair is still out of the way. This is something that I installed, this panel right here, and on switch. So I now have a way to read my battery voltage, whether I'm plugged into shore power or boondocking or dry camping. I've always got a monitor here. That's two USB charging ports for charging your phone and your devices. And that is a regular 12 volt accessory plug. This is for your TV from uh, your antenna that's on board and old technology, telephone, and uh, 110 volt outlet. This switch I installed and this controls two sets of fans on the refrigerator. When you turn this on, it turns on two fans that are on the back of the refrigerator to assist with cooling the coils and removing the heat and it also turns on two little blowers inside the refrigerator to help distribute the cool, cuts down on icing on the, uh, on the coils inside. Shut that off. The chair has wheels on the front, no wheels on the back. So you pick it up and roll it into position. The next thing you want to do, we're going to start hanging the shelves. Now, and this is how we carry ours. Everybody does this a little different, but this is how we do ours. You can see the two hangers here, and those two hangers fit right in here. Now, since I'm right-handed, I actually have a, a black mark on here so that I can see and know where to line it up. So let me grab this. See the cabinet. All right. All right, so here's the cabinet. And normally I'm going to sit it down here and get myself a good grip and put a hand under the bottom, one hand on the top edge here. And I'm going to raise it up and I'm going to line it up with that mark. And the cabinet is up. And this is where your paper towel goes. This is the cabinet that goes over the stove. I'm going to pick it up. And it hangs right here. Okay? All right. Nice and simple. All right, so now we've got the hanging closet and the, uh, the bathroom to put together. This is a shelf that I installed and it's on the bedroom side, but at this point I can go ahead and pull this up and hook that right there so it'll already be in place. And basically grab and lift. Come up, push it in from the back side. Once it's there, it's good. This is another shelf that I installed and it comes up and it attaches and hangs over a small screw head on top of this cabinet so it fits level. So all this stuff is real light material. You don't want to be putting anything heavy up here. You had not got to worry about this breaking. That's Amsteel uh, braided line, but you just don't want to overload it. Not necessary. Okay, this I made so that I could have power back here at the head of the bed and it's basically an extension cord and it's available back there so this just unplugs out of those two little grooves and there's a receptacle right here that it plugs into so that just kept me from having to have another loose piece next step is 
it's the second drawer slides into place just like that and this is the microwave microwave goes there and it plugs in right below here so you would pull this out to plug it in shove it back into place all right let's set up the bathroom and here's what we're going to do we're going to take the pull handle and basically slide this direction about three inches three or four inches taking right here and stand it up once that comes up all the way that pushes in till these two doors line up there is a latch right here so now the door is secure there is a safety switch right located in this place here and basically basically that switch uh, when it's up and open it kills all the power in the back half of the coach when this raises up it depresses the button okay are we ready ready all right so you grab this about midway there's two panels just hold them together and lift come all the way up get your skirt in a little bit this swings out it lines up there latch goes into place and there is another latch up top and that goes into place and the walls are complete okay so I did some bathroom mods and I'm going to show them to you and the way I set it up originally this has two shower curtains and you kind of have to wrap yourself up in this fabric cocoon to get a shower it was horrible horrible uh, I was not happy at all with it so this is what I done I'm gonna step into the shower itself I'm gonna turn the light on maybe that'll help a little yeah, made it brighter okay now I put polyethylene sheeting it wraps over the top it goes all the way around the wall you can see it hangs down into the tub to the top edge and this is a secondary piece here it's like a flap okay because remember we got to make this waterproof this was originally velcroed up here the problem with that was whenever you showered you had water everywhere so I mounted two magnets on the back of it I'm gonna stick it there for the moment and this is a metallic plate and basically simple raise up the flap push it back a little bit like this and that attaches there and there that holds that which also gives you a hook this comes in and overlaps a little bit and goes right there now you have a complete seal also the shower curtain the original one hung down in the bottom of the tub so it was just messy so I cut it off and I installed marbles in the bottom of it for weight and so now to get your shower that's going to pull out it comes all the way around and you now have a complete waterproof enclosure and unless you're shooting water straight up at the ceiling you're not going to have a problem okay so I'm standing in the tub so that you can see the toilet now the trail manor originally comes with the Thetford series 80 Electra something something it is a recirculating toilet uh, they work okay some people love them some people hate them uh, ours started developing cracks so we upgraded to something that made us happy this is the Thetford uh, C263 toilet this is the control panel for it 
this is a little cabinet that I built to close in the back and the plumbing and we'll also look at this outside as well. One advantage of this is the whole bowl will rotate so that you can find your best angle so that you have the most room. Also if you're showering you can turn it out of the way which gives you more room here. Now to open the toilet for emptying that pushes over that opens the little valve here so everything will drain out. That closes it up. To flush you basically press the button and you're looking in the toilet and there's your water. Okay and then open this and down it goes. Also when we built this in the original fan for the bathroom is located straight down here and set it up so that uh, when you turn the switch on, which is this, you can hear the fan, it actually creates a minor vacuum inside this cavity so while you're sitting here doing your business it's going to pull fumes down and out which is really really good. There's also an alert on here that tells you when the cassette is full and we'll take a look at the cassette in a little bit. We talked about the cassette toilet. Well, this is the outside shower, hot and cold running water. But this is the door that opens for the new cassette toilet. And when you're ready to empty it, when the light comes on that says it is full, this handle lifts up, okay, and it pulls out. And there is your cassette. You take it to a regular toilet or a dump site and you empty it. That button is the air release so that it doesn't gurgle and splash when you empty. When you're done, you put about a pint of water in here and two ounces of the Thetford uh, solution and it goes back in. Another thing that this has is a pull-out handle and wheels. So if it's full, you can take it with you like this. So you can roll it to where you want to go. And let me let you look inside. So this is the inside cavity, water supply, power, and this is where I keep a little extra chemical because all you need is two ounces. Mighty clean installation you got there. Thank you. I had good help. <laughs> One thing too on this model, this is the cap that you would remove and that's where your affluent's going to empty from. But inside the cap, it's got measuring marks. So you pour two ounces of your uh, chemical in it, pour it in, and it's a no-drip system. Works extremely well. All right, so this lays in here, pushes in. That's locked down. It's ready to use. 4.6 gallons is the total capacity on it. Extremely well. Everything else is pretty standard. You've got your storage, mirror, lavatory. So the toilet, the, the toilet's pretty unique and we're very happy with it. Okay, so let's take a look inside the closet. And what I did, I installed a bungee cord and it's attached on one end over here basically it wraps around your clothes hangers comes up and affixes to a hook over here and that keeps your clothes from coming off of the rod when you're laying this down and while you're traveling that worked out extremely well for us so we have the three drawers uh, inside this drawer there's some extra filter material for the air condition there's also extra fluorescent tubes for the uh, fluorescent fixtures that are inside. So all of the long fixtures, all of the long fixtures are fluorescent. The little small ones were originally incandescent. They now have LED bulbs in them. So we got drawer here. We've got drawer here. 
plenty of storage space. More storage space. We keep this bungee cord on here for travel. It just secures the door and secures the top. You can look inside here. We keep a sheet of aluminum foil laying there, but you can see how clean everything is. It's shiny. Oven works well. Again, our cabinets. Cabinets here. Okay. We have cabinets under the sink. Now, this is the water tank. It's a 20 gallon water tank. This is the back of the water heater. The water heater can be operated off of gas or electric, 110 volts when you're plugged in. On these water heaters, there's a tiny little switch outside, and this is a modification that I did. Uh, to turn the electric part on or off, you have to be outside, open the back of the panel, and reach up under and fit this little tiny hid switch that most people don't even know exists. What I did, I installed a switch here so that to turn the water heater on, all I have to do is flip the switch up and the water heater's on. Let's look in here. This is the gas portion of the water heater, so if you're running it off of gas, that's where you're going to turn it off and on. This is the uh, monitoring station, so to test, we're going to press this button, and this is our battery. This is our fresh water tank, it's showing one third full, and our holding tank, which is our gray water tank outside, is showing empty. This turns the electric water pump on and off. This is the refrigerator fan, and that's for uh, when you're going down the road, you want to turn this on, and that helps to evacuate heat while you're traveling and the shells are closed. This is something else that I added, and this is a 110 volt monitor panel. And to me, this is a really important piece of equipment because it shows what your voltage is coming into the coach, 122 volts AC. Uh, we are currently using 1.56 amps. Uh, so our power is 105 watts. And these two pieces here, energy and power. That's if you were using this at home and so you can calculate energy usage and monies and whatever. And this is also our Hertz, which is 60 Hertz, which is what all voltage is in the U.S. It's 120, 125 volts, 110 volts, 60 Hertz. Okay. But now I'm going to turn the water heater on so you can see what happens here. So let's just look at our amps. So we're at 1.58 amps. I'm turning the water heater on. That's the electric part of the water heater. So we're now at almost 12 amps draw running that. Okay. So that allows you to keep up with what your, uh, what electrical usage you have going on in the camper because it really is easy to get way too much stuff turned on and start uh, overheating your supply cord. This is a digital thermostat for the furnace. Kathy, swing around to the front, to the furnace, just to show where it's at. And that's the furnace there. So this controls the furnace. So now you don't have to worry about ex what is the temperature. Basically set it to what you want, up or down, and turn it on and it's good to go. And that's for your onboard gas furnace. This is the Norcoal refrigerator. It runs off of gas, 110 volts, and will also run off a of battery, although nobody recommends running it off a of battery because it will wipe a battery out. This is the thermostat, and this is the start for 
if you're lighting it on gas and that shows you when you've got your gas power on. So simple little refrigerator, three shelves in the door, two shelves in the bottom, catch pan, and your freezer. Also up here are, and I don't know if you can even see those, I got it. I'm going to turn my little fans on. Remember I had mentioned earlier that there were fans. And you can hear them running. And you can hear me putting my finger on them. And what those do, that just helps to blow a little air on these fins and helps it to cool. Okay. All right, moving right along. This is the original chair. That drops down for storage under there. This chair is still usable. We sit in it, it's reasonably comfortable, but the foam here does need to be replaced. And I've got a friend of mine that does upholstery work, and he said he would do the foam work for, I don't know, 50, 60 bucks. So not a whole lot of money there. These are the two tables. And these tables swing out and up. So they come up. The leg comes out and extends to the floor. This side also has a leaf in it. So you can extend it on out another 20 inches. And the leaf is mounted underneath here out of the way. Okay. So when we're done with the table, that folds up. That folds down. This one works the exact same way, except it does not have a leaf in it. And the leg comes down, and then the leg extends to the floor. Let's take a look under the sofa. Now, this also comes out and makes a bed. So basically, this pulls out, and this is the filler piece that would go in back here. So it makes a nice size bed, reasonably comfortable. So if you want to access underneath, you lift from here, bring it up. And what I did, I made a little pole and you notice it's notched on this end. There's a black mark here. So that end just lays down there and the, the notched end fits on the black marks that are there. That holds it up. You hadn't got to worry about it falling on you. This is the center support for the outside awning and this is the crank handle for the awning. This is the original tool for operating the, uh, the stabilizer jacks, and even though I've welded nuts on there so you can use a power tool to make it easy, you can still use this if you want to or need to. So this becomes a nice large storage area here. It also has outside access door located there. It's the front. It's a small storage area, but you know, works out pretty good lights up there as well. Right. This is the air conditioner and it also has heat built into it. So you can use it as an air condition with the thermostat to control the temperature or you can turn it to the heat setting. You can turn it to heat and also use this to control the, the temperature inside. That does real well. Uh, so we primarily just use this. To the left and over the door and near the stove is your power vent, which is the big one. It's like I got a twig in there or a leaf or something. So we'll close that up. All right, we're coming back inside now and are fixing to start 
lowering all the inside for travel. Uh, normally it only takes us a couple of minutes. Uh, right now since we're doing the video it may take a little bit longer. But um, Travis is going to get started in just a minute and uh, he's not going to be doing any talking and I'll try to tell you exactly what he's doing. So come on let's get, Time this, to go. get this thing going. All right. These are the panels that close up the, the gap in between the walls and the shell. So um, those are the little bungees that he made to help keep the panels up. And uh, this only takes a couple of minutes to get this done. And actually, if you don't have bugs, we've left these panels open for a little while to help it air out some once you get in and get some of the heat out of it works pretty good for that. Okay, that part's done. Now he's going to be moving over to the cabinets. And if we have the chair stored over there, they just go up against the chair. Microwave's next. Double click. Sometimes I have a hard time keeping up with the gyro. He's moving fast. Always turn your, your doors or your drawers to the edge so they can't come open. Yep, that's a good point. All right, here we go. Last cabinet from the kitchen. Lower the shelf. I really like the shelf. That gives a little extra kitchen storage space. And I turn around like that so that as I go forward, the doors are already facing where they need to be. All right. Next comes the bathroom. Get this folded up. I'm going to move back a little bit so nope, I'll move in some so I can get a better look. Right. Undo the latches that hold the top wall up. Take all the magnetic stuff off. Store that in the sink for safekeeping. Shower curtain goes over and above the outside wall there. All right, folds the, the wall in. And then down. And that little switch automatically will kill the lights. Okay, door folds. Top comes out, folds down. Pushes in, boom. Bathroom's put down. Next comes the closet. He's got his little shelf over there that he undoes. That's a little curtain that he made for separation from the, the bedroom and to the, the living area. Works good for heating and cooling and things like that. The closet just slides out and then rotates down. And it goes down below the, the other there. And, and we're finished on the inside, except for one last thing. You can't have a rug right at the door, so that moves in. And the chair moves. And the chair moves. And we're now ready to close the inside. All right, let's all right. go outside. So let's go outside. First thing we want to do is make sure we turn off all the lights. Make sure that our water pump is off. The gas water heater is off. Turning off this monitoring panel. And since we're not using the refrigerator, turn all that off as well. And we are ready to go. All right, we're outside now. So first thing he's gonna do is fold up the steps. And then the door. And 
I apologize for the wind noise. It's really windy out here today, so chances are you're hearing a lot of wind noise. Okay, that part's done. All right, uh, Travis is pushing in the, the bed unit. Slides right in. I'm doing the stabilizer points and next comes just pushing down the shell really easy there do you want me to get the, the hook with you you got to do both sides you just, you just right. follow. this is usually my side to get but he's having to do it since I'm videoing and then back over to the other side that's just a foothold that uh, makes it easy for you to put your weight on to get it to hook and this is the sofa slide inside just push it in easy peasy um, making sure the uh, LP tanks are off checking all that make sure there's nothing under there before it goes down releasing the uh, stabilizer safety, latch. safety latches there And then time for the shell to go down. So just a quick little push. And boom, that's down. Quick and easy. All right, get a little push there. Clicks into place. Back over to the other side. As you can see, this is actually a quick process. And uh, everything's latched down. Now he gets the corner safety latches. Travel latches for each corner and pulling up the four stabilizers with the drill motor. That's it. This is our 2007 Trail Manor Camper. Uh, everything on it works. It works well. It's had some nice modifications. It's got the usual scuffs and wear marks that Trail Manors get, but overall it's in really good functional condition. Everything works and it works well. And I'm just going to do a quick walk around. Let you look at it while he's getting the travel latches done. Here's our little doggy in the window. That's always a good uh, conversation piece there. Um, his new seal that he did recently. Shall we look at the bumper? You want me to show you the bumper? Yeah, show us the bumper storage area and the bumper. This is the storage area and the bumper. Good for your uh, electrical cords, your uh, sanitation hoses, water hoses, things like that. Um, got a lot of good storage down in there. There is, hmm, it's there is an outlet right here on the side where the power cord was designed to come out of. But the problem is, with all campers, pushing that cord into this small area so that it will be out of the way is a pain, especially when it's cold and this is stiff as a board. So we just let ours come out here. It and works well and it's a lot less trouble. So let me coil this up. Chicken. All right, I think the camper is ready to go. You want to go camping? <laughs> Thank you all for taking time to look at our video. If you have any questions, please give us a call. Uh, our reason for selling is we have bought a new fifth wheel because uh, we're quickly approaching going full time on the road and uh, felt that a larger motorhome or a larger camper would be better suited to that need. Thank you all much.